And hello everyone, my name is Danielle Perry, and today I'm going to be doing the Jet Engine Experiment Group Report for Group 1. My objectives today are to review the theory behind the jet engine and what we did specifically in this experiment, as well as present the data that we collected and show you guys how I analyzed it. Also, I'll go over some conclusions from this experiment and the recommendations that I suggest. So the theory behind the jet engine, um, it operates on a similar principle like a steam turbine. It's also called a gas turbine, where essentially there's a pressure differential on one end of the turbine that makes it spin. But it's a little bit different about like how the whole system works. Um, so you have an air intake, like any engine, and the air is compressed, and then a fuel is added. And so whenever the fuel is added to the hot air, that creates a combustion reaction, and that's ultimately what drives the turbine. And in this case, or for a normal jet engine, one of the turbines would just be generating a thrust force, but in our case, this jet engine is actually used to generate electricity, not thrust. So it's, it goes through a thrust transition deflector, which is connected to the pre-turbine, which ultimately spins a rotor inside of a generator to create electricity. And then for this experiment um, specifically, like I said, we were intaking just atmospheric air at ambient temperature and pressure, and the fuel that we were injecting into the air was kerosene. And then the goals of this experiment were to gain an understanding of gas turbine engines and also analyze the real cycle of this. Um, the gas turbine engine is also known as the Brayton cycle, like what we learned in thermodynamics. Um, to give an idea of what this experiment cycle kind of looked like in the stages that uh, were presented, this is in the lab manual. Like you can see, you have your uh, compressor combustion through turbine one, which is then goes through the uh, transition to turbine two, and then ultimately powers the generator. And later, I'll be referring to something called the power cycle. Um, that's what I looked at mainly for analysis of this experiment. And that essentially just refers to turbine one and how it supplied power to the generator. I mean, turbine two, not turbine one. Um, so for the raw data, this is the compressor stage, so stages one and two. As you can see, the um, compressor outlet temperature is a lot higher than the inlet, that makes sense. There's speed of compression. And if you look at the pressure, um, the outlet pressure of the compressor, it's very similar to the inlet pressure of turbine one, which is it's supposed to be. That's how the cycle works. Um, and then right there is the turbine inlet and outlet temperatures those follow the same basic trend, but if you notice there's a large dip right there, about like 500 seconds, that's whenever the um, generator speed got too high and so the engine automatically shut off. So we had to restart the experiment. Um, but as you can see, it took us a lot less time to get back up to the speed that we were at because the engine was already hot and it didn't, we didn't have to wait for it to heat up. And then the different steps that you can kind of see starting at about 300 ending at about uh, like 450 seconds is we were inter going up different intervals of uh, engine speeds. And then our fuel flow data, sadly, we did not get any, something is wrong with the sensor, so it was recorded as zero, but it's supposed to be around somewhere between like one and three liters per minute to give you an idea. And then our engine RPM, as you can see, follows the same general trend as um, everything else with the steps and the large dip right there. And next is the generator. Our, um, the power, current, and voltage all follow the same general trend. They're all directly related. As well as the um, speed of it follows the same general trend as well. So as far as like how I analyze this data, since the fluid that we were working with in this experiment was air, I mainly used air tables to um, grab the enthalpies at each stage since we're dealing with the cycle. So I grabbed it at one, two, three, four, and five in between the like compressor and turbines. And with that, I was able to calculate the power cycle efficiency, so turbine two. And I did this at the peak engine speed. So for our case, that was like right before we shut off at the very end at about like 6,300, 400 RPM. But we were actually holding it at steady state for maybe like 20 seconds before it shut off that first time at about 53,000. And I 
compared the results. Um, I'll cover that later. But as you can see, the efficiency came out to be about 30%, which is pretty much what we expected. Um, and here you can see comparing, looking at the peak speed data versus steady state, they really don't differ a lot. Um, I kind of expected them to differ a little bit more. It could be because we weren't at steady state for very long. Just in general, you would expect your steady state data to be a little bit more efficient than whenever you're running it like way too fast because you could have problems occurring. Um, we could also have been very close to steady state at uh, 63. You know, maybe the data was a little misleading. Um, that leads me into how sensitive this system is. Um, we had to be very careful whenever we were um, moving the lever and everything uh, to make sure that we don't get the generator speed above, I think it was 9,000 for it'll shut off. And then also, just in general, I think a lot of the sensors on this system probably could be checked. I had some random data points, like temperatures dropping down like negative 8,000. I just had to omit because it was, you couldn't even see the data at that point. Um, so some sort of calibration might need to be done on those. And then obviously something went wrong with our fuel flow meter check. Um, but if we would have had it, I would have calculated our fuel efficiency, which I would have done by doing the um, fuel flow rate over the power that we uh, generated at the end. So, yeah, that's about it.